Carlo Gets Real is my YouTube channel devoted to all things fishing related. It features tests, reviews and product information along with great fishing tips and advice. Why not subscribe so that you don't miss a thing? G'day. For those of you who don't know me, my name's Steve Starling and I'm a full-time fishing writer and presenter. A big part of my job involves capturing images and video for use in books and magazines and various online outlets. So obviously, cameras are an important tool for me. My main work camera is a big, heavy DSLR with a number of interchangeable lenses, but I always like to carry a lightweight, compact point and shoot camera with me, both as a backup in case anything goes wrong with the big camera, and also for those jobs where I need something smaller and lighter. During my 40 year career, I've been through quite a few cameras. I've broken them, I've drowned them, or they've just fallen apart with corrosion. The fishing world is a very harsh environment for sophisticated optical equipment. Throughout that period, I've always been on the lookout for the perfect fisherman's camera, and I've never found it, well, up until now. I think I might have finally found something that comes very close to ticking all the boxes for being the perfect fisherman's camera. It's this, Nikon's AEW-1. It's a compact mirrorless camera with interchangeable lenses and a 14.2 megapixel sensor that will capture both RAW and JPEG images, as well as shooting high definition video. But you know what? Those aren't the best things about this particular camera. This is. Yep, fully waterproof. Without the addition of any casing or housing, that camera is rated to go to a depth of 15 meters or almost 50 feet beneath the surface of the water. It's also rated to be shockproof when dropped onto a hard surface from a height of two meters. And no, I'm not about to test that. It's also sealed against dust and rated to handle extremes of temperature that I hope I'll never have to work in. It's one tough little nut of a camera and it feels it, it's solid. It weighs over half a kilo, well over a pound on the old scale. And that's because it uses metal in a lot of the areas where other cameras use plastic. Mine's picked up a fair few dings and scratches in a year of hard use, but it's still going strong. So let's have a more detailed look at Nikon's AW-1 and see if it really might be the ultimate fisherman's camera. As I said before, this is a mirrorless camera with interchangeable lenses. It'll take any of Nikon's one series lenses, but at the moment there are only two waterproof lenses that are specifically made for it. The 11 to 27.5 mil zoom that it's usually sold with in kit form and a faster fixed focal length 10 mil prime lens. Now I've got both and you might wonder why I bothered spending the extra dough to buy a fixed lens that's only one mil wider than the zoom. Well that's because the prime lens is a bit faster which makes it great in low light conditions and it's also a tad sharper in my opinion. It'll focus in a little bit closer than the zoom too, down to about 20 centimetres. Those are all important things, especially for underwater work. So for me, the zoom tends to live on the camera for general above water work, and the 10 mil goes on for the majority of my underwater stuff. By the way, don't get too excited about the wide angle properties of those waterproof lenses. Because of the camera's sensor size, the 11 to 27.5 zoom equates to about 30 to 75 mil in 35 mil film or full frame digital terms, while the 10 translates to a 27. Not exactly fish eye performance, especially underwater, where natural magnification further narrows the field of view. You definitely need to bear this in mind. I'd love to see a 6 mil underwater lens for this camera, but I wouldn't hold my breath waiting, if you'll pardon the pun. As I said at the beginning, the Nikon AW-1 offers 14.2 megapixel resolution and it can shoot in both RAW and JPEG. It also records quality HD video, including bursts of slow motion if you're into that. In my opinion, the image quality for both stills and videos is pretty damn good. I've had plenty of photos from this camera published in magazines and used online. Images like these ones, and these, and I especially like this one. 
The video is equally acceptable both above and below water. Here's some vision I shot in a circulating live bait tank aboard a charter boat. Pretty cool, huh? Feels like you could reach out and touch them. And here's some pods of dolphins chasing bait balls of pilchards off the New South Wales far south coast. I shot this footage by simply hanging over the side of the boat with my arms underwater. Pretty specky. Here's a bit more video footage landing some big calamari squid off Tasmania. A few seconds of this stuff actually made it onto free-to-air television as part of the off-road adventure show, so I guess you can say it's broadcast quality. The biggest trick in getting acceptable underwater images, both still and video, is to have super clear water and plenty of sunshine. You just can't beat those two ingredients. Okay, let's get our heads out of the water and look at a few more features of the Nikon AW1. Although it's a reasonably small camera in my hands, the ergonomics of the controls aren't too bad. The on-off switch is on top, shutter release next to it, video button next to that. Oh, and you can snap high-res stills while you're shooting video too, that's neat. On the back we have the three-inch monitor, which is your viewfinder, playback screen, and menu screen. It's quite bright and clear, but like most of these things, it's hard to see outdoors in direct sunlight, especially if you're wearing polarized sunglasses, as you usually are when you're fishing. In fact, it's a pain in the butt. And there's no optical viewfinder. That's probably the thing I like least about this camera. The typical controls you find on this sort of camera work well, and there are a couple of nice shortcuts, like toggle left to adjust your shooting rate from single frames, to five frames a second, 15 frames a second, 30, even 60. But at those faster rates, the buffer to the memory card will quickly fill up, so you'll only get a very short burst. Also, at those high frame rates, focus will be locked on what it was for the first frame, so it won't follow a moving subject. For those reasons, if I'm going for rapid shooting, I usually use either five or maybe 15 frames per second. Works for me. And down the bottom here, we have the 10, 5, and 2 second self timer settings, which are great for selfies holding a fish or whatever, except you have to go back in after each shot and reset the self timer. That's a bit annoying. There might be a way around it, but I haven't found it yet. Toggling right gives you exposure compensation. At zero, I've found that the highlights often wash out, so I tend to spend a lot of time with the exposure compensation set at minus 0.3. Works really well and it stays there even if you turn the camera off and back on again, despite what I read to the contrary in some tests. A good thing in some ways, but not if you forget. Toggling up takes you into shooting modes. There are some interesting and useful modes too, like miniature effect, which gives you this sort of image selective colour, easy panorama, and so on. Oh, one other thing I'd say, don't worry too much about the underwater mode, at least not if you're working near the surface of the water like I am as a fisherman. It's mostly there for divers who go much deeper where there's a dramatic colour shift. And if you use it, you can't capture images in RAW. That's worth remembering. Toggling down takes you to the different flash modes for the built-in pop-up flash, which works quite well, both above and below the water. Of course, you can get to all this stuff through the standard menu as well, and it's all pretty straightforward. But do spend a bit of time studying the manual to find out exactly what lives where. I didn't always find it completely intuitive. Still on the back, there's a display button to bring up or hide various on-screen data. Oh, and this interesting button, right here near the thumb rest. It actually allows you to cycle through the shooting modes by tilting the camera one way or the other. Clever, huh? It's designed for divers or snow skiers wearing thick gloves, and to be honest, I've never used it. But just be a bit careful that you don't activate it accidentally if you've got fat fingers like me. Whoops. Moving to the bottom of the camera, we have a standard tripod socket and the access door for the battery and memory card. The access doors on the AW1 all have this fail-safe double locking system for underwater work, and if you leave one of the buttons unlocked, you'll see the yellow warning panel. The battery is a lithium ion job, and of course you get a charger with the camera. I've found battery life to be fair to reasonable without being great, maybe a couple of hundred frames per charge. But turn on the built-in GPS compass thingy and that battery use goes right out the window. It really chews batteries. I reckon leave it off. 
Another door on the side gives access to input and output jacks, the usual things. The overall ergonomics and handling of the camera are actually pretty good for a unit of this size, but it'd be pretty easy to drop it in the water, especially if you had cold hands. I'd seriously consider adding a wrist strap or some other safety device. Lens swapping takes a bit of pressure and for good reason. The seals are tight and they're backed up by these rubber o-rings lubricated with silicon grease. You need to keep these clean, re-grease them occasionally and ideally replace them every year or so. It's all in the manual. So basically that's it, the Nikon AW1. I'd have to say that it's the closest thing to the perfect fisherman's camera that I've yet found. Yes, there are a few little things about it that niggle me, like that lack of an optical viewfinder, and I'd like to see a bit better battery life and perhaps some more intuitive placement of some of the controls. But overall, it ticks all the boxes. If you're a keen angler, a fishing guide, a crewman on a charter boat or the skipper, or someone who's interested in getting into a bit of fishing journalism, I don't think you can really afford to be without one of these things. I'll let you know a little secret. A lot of the pros are using them nowadays and a lot of the images that you're seeing in magazines and the video footage that you're seeing online is being taken with these. A lot of them have played it fairly close to the chest so I guess I've just let the cat out of the bag. For well under a grand if you shop around a bit, they're also pretty good value. When I eventually break mine or drop it over the side, I'll definitely be getting another one. Who knows, there might even be a version 2 by then with an optical viewfinder and a few of those other little niggles ironed out. But until then, the Nikon AW1 wins my vote as the closest thing to the ultimate fisherman's camera. If you'd like to read a bit more detail about it, check out my blog on the subject. You'll find it here. Until next time, tight lines. If you enjoyed this clip and would like to see more like it, please take a moment to subscribe to my Starlow Gets Real channel on YouTube.